Hello and welcome to this quick guide to card sorting. The following quick guide is going to use a free account from a tool called UX Metrics to carry out card sorting online. And it's a process that's going to help you improve your information architecture on your website and, to be honest, your site's overall usability. So let's jump right in with step number one, which is to create an account on UX Metrics and then log in. If you wish to run card sorting online, you're going to need a tool or an app to manage the process of allowing participants to organize their cards, aren't you? So by far the best tool that I've found is one called UX Metrics, which offers a generous free account. It also, and this is another really good thing, allows participants to carry out card sorting on mobile devices, unlike many of the competitors. So once you've registered, go ahead and log in. Now, step number two is to create a new online open card sort. So once you've logged in, you want to click on the card sorting option and then on new card sort. Enter the name of the test. It can be whatever you want. Um, this is only for your personal reference. It's not something your participants are going to see. Then there are instructions for your participants and a thank you message. You can leave that as is unless you want to customize it and just go ahead and click on next and then select open card sort, right? This type of card sort allows users to organize the cards into any groupings that make sense to them. And that's what helps inform your information architecture. Step number three is to add cards to your card sorting. To add a card to your card sorting, just click on the new card button. Now, I recommend not adding more than approximately 30 or 40 cards because more than that, you get in danger of just overwhelming participants and your sessions become long and painful and just frustrating. Each card should represent an individual type of content on your site. That content might represent, a, say, for example, a benefit of your offering, or it might be a feature, a question that users have, or even an objection that could stop them from acting. It might also include a task that users want to complete on the website. So because you've only got 30 or 40 cards, focus on the most critical content um, uh, as you go about creating those different cards. And once you've added all of your cards, click on the next button. Now, if you've got a pro account, you can upload your own logo and change a few other settings. But for our situation, just click on next. Step number four is to publish and share your test. So after you've previewed your card sort to make sure it's all right and working, click on that publish button. UX Metrics will give you a URL that you can then share with participants. Now to recruit participants, I recommend only using people outside of your organization. And ideally, if you can, look for people who are your target audience. You can do this by recruiting through mailing lists that you might have or through your social media channels, both of which can be very effective ways of recruiting. But failing all of that, you can use friends and family. That's absolutely fine. Just people outside of the organization who don't necessarily understand the details of what it is that you do and what you offer. And don't worry too much if your participants are not experts in the field that you are working with. Because if you can create a really clear, informative information architecture for your non-expert audience, it's also going to help your experts because it's going to reduce their cognitive load when they're navigating your site and make it feel easier and simple. In terms of the number of people that you're looking to recruit, according to the Nielsen Norman Group, you should aim for about 15 participants. And that will help you see reoccurring trends that appear. Step number five then is to analyze your results. So once all your participants have completed the test, you can log into UX Metrics, select your card sort, and click on the end this study button. And now you can click on view report. Click on the groups tab to see all the different groups that users created when organizing the cards. Now you want to pay particular attention to groups that have been created by several people. In other words, several people have created the same groups. Reoccurring groups like this are a sign that your label, the label that they've created, matches the mental model of your overall audience. Now you'll also encounter groups that are similar but not exactly the same. So for example, some participants may label a group about while others use the term about us. 
Now what you can do is merge these groups together by selecting the associated checkbox with each of the options and click merge selected groups. And you can use the data that you've found in this report of you know what groups there are, how often they appear and things like that to weed out rarely used groups that not many people have used and to merge other similar groups together. And what's left over can become the basis of your information architecture. Then we come to step number six, which is to run a closed card sorting session. So if you're working with a lot of content, if you've got more content that you could possibly fit onto 30 or 40 cards, then you may wish to run a second test called a closed card sorting test. Now this is optional, but it's worth doing. You see, a closed card sorting test asks participants to organize cards into predefined groups. Those groups will be the groups that you identified from the previous test. You can actually use the top level information architecture that you've just created from the open card sorting as the groups in your closed card sorting. And because participants are going to be working with predefined groups rather than having to think of the groups themselves, you can ask them to organize considerably more cards than you did first time round. By running a closed card sorting session, you get to check whether your sections that you created are going to work for all of your content, not just the top 30 or so cards that you tested previously. So to run a closed card sorting session, you need to repeat basically steps one to three, but select closed instead of open when you select the type of uh, card sorting you want to do. You will also need to define your groups within the interface. So it'll actually ask you to define what those top level groups are going to be. Step number seven, once you've done your closed card sorting, is to create a tree test for testing the information architecture you've created. So the final step really of creating a great information architecture is to check whether people can find content within the site structure you've just created. And you could do this by creating a tree test in UX metrics. Click the tree test menu option and then click new tree test. As before, give the test a name and click next. Now enter the information about your uh, site architecture in the tools provided. So you need to replicate your site structure inside of UX metrics. Then we come to step eight, which is to assign the tasks for the tree test. So once you've entered the site structure, you can assign a series of tasks for users to complete by, by navigating through the tree that you've created. Now I recommend you limit yourself to about three or four tests and you focus on the tasks that um, help users find critical content. So for example, you might want to test something like imagine that you wanted to update your credit card details. Where would you look in the information architecture? Now avoid using words that appear in the site structure itself as that's going to bias your results. For each task, you also need to assign the correct choice so that um, the system knows where users should end up if someone has done the task correctly. Now, once you've done all of that, you can complete the setup and run your test just as you have previously. And that brings us on to step nine, which is to analyze your tree test results. So once users have finished running the test and trying to complete the various tasks, you'll be able to assess how well things went. Now you want to pay particular attention to the percentage of people who completed the task and whether or not they did it through the most direct route, which in UX metrics is called directness. Also note how long it took them to complete the task. The faster they did it, and the faster they did it successfully, the better your information architecture is. It's even better if they did it successfully, they did it fast, and they did it through the most direct route. If users make mistakes, look at where things are going wrong, and how many people is going wrong for, and then amend your site structure accordingly by changing things like misleading labels. But if you see high success rates and the participants are able to achieve results relatively fast, then you can be confident that you've created an effective information architecture and your card sorting exercise has worked.